Yo, 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 what's up all you burners, stoners, and potheads, and especially all you gardeners out there. This is Mr. Wee Man and Big Girl with THE Grow Hour. Big Girl, my brother, how the hell are you? What's up? I'm really good, dude. How are you? I'm good, man. Talking a little early before we start recording. You got a fucking new tattoo today. You want to talk about this new tattoo you got? Because you showed me a pic, boy, and that looked like it hurt, but it is very beautiful. Uh, Yeah, it was awesome. It was, uh, man, I tried everything i could to get out of this pain and it was not uh it didn't work <laughs> uh, i don't I, you know hey if you want to get a tattoo on the top of your foot power to you uh i'm glad i did you know it's not like i don't like it but man it's such a dope tattoo uh it's, it's it like ain't small devil face kind of yeah it's the whole top of my foot it was a uh you know it's like some people you read online and some people talk about it wasn't as bad as some things you read you know but um it was definitely my most painful tattoo <laughs> a lot of good looking color a lot of good looking a good looking piece yeah she did, uh, she did a great job on it yeah so uh but we're smoking some uh we're both we didn't call each other but we're both wearing the same shirt we're both smoking blueberry soda today <laughs> i love it i love it i love it i love it so we wear pink yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is october isn't it isn't it uh breast cancer awareness month so we should be wearing yeah. pink yeah. <laughs> but i tell you what though i found a seed in the blueberry soda i think we were talking earlier about this before we, we hit record and uh I, I put that in the water it's in the fucking uh it's in the uh paper towel right now and it's sprouted so tomorrow it's getting planted i'm st- stoked yeah yeah that happens sometimes i uh I never like to see seeds and weed uh, that people get, but I do breed fucking five feet outside my flower tent and it definitely happens every now and again. Um, so the dad of that should be either the peach stank male or the bog blueberry, uh, sour blueberry or sour strawberry male. So you should be able to know because if it's sour and strawberry, that's pretty pretty big indication of where it's going <laughs> i'm excited man because i got i'll have four four plants in those in that tent i don't know if they're all females or not we'll find out but if i got four plants in that tent and they're all female i'm in trouble so yeah. i have to keep those i gotta keep those ladies tight and small or else yeah. it's gonna go out of control so but i'm super stoked because uh i'm super stoked with growing that uh, uh lebanese landry strain that i got three nice ladies I'll, I'll post a picture of that tomorrow and show you on show your grow fridays of course and uh but they're looking late they're looking good man I, I, i'm excited about this strain it, it uh um you know what happened i think we talked yesterday during practice and uh uh the cup got knocked down and bent fucking one of the plants over so i had it, mrs weedman who is macgyver to the t got it back up took a stick got it back up took a little uh little piece of twine around there just very lightly so it had something to lean on and then took a pin like a a bobby pin and placed it in the top of the of the um stick and then put the uh the twine up there uh, on the top so it would hold it straight up and i I tell you what it's it 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 looked like i didn't think it was gonna make it i think it's gonna make it i think it's alive it's alive i think it's alive (laughs) so i'm super stoked so when you see tomorrow the picture you gotta let me know but yeah i'm gonna probably keep it like that you still see a little crimp in the in it in it it, but it looks like it's getting better and better so it happened like three or four days ago so but i think it's gonna make it i think it's gonna be alive so super stoked super stoked man what you got anything right now you got in the hopper that you're super stoked about man i did just test out so my last uh auto flower uh cross i tested out and i was planning on doing some breeding honestly because it was a pretty big test for it but um it just didn't work out that way for me so i just did a test on it and uh man does it look and smell good i was on i was out of town for a little bit my wife watered down there for me and uh i got in trouble because she's oh no i smell like weed i was like yeah that's the veg room with auto flowers like Look at me filling some space in here, you know. And uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I do that whole last auto. This this one coming up on my next selections definitely. I uh, I'm really geeked about these next this next auto flower run, and really all these plants. Honestly, the bog sour uh, sour strawberry bog line and the peach tank is so nice. And, like the pictures you posted the last couple of days, man. Those fucking plants were amazing. Those were all old. Like that was that sparkling wine. Uh, was a friend of mine's selection a couple years old, I think, by now. Um, that Peachy Keen's the mom of that peach tank. Uh, so she that's unfortunately her last run sometime. But she's still in the peach tank really heavy. Um, but man, does she look beautiful. She's like velvety. 
and just stacked. That was, you know, you can, but um, yeah, thank you. Pretty, thank you. pretty ladies. Terpy looking yeah. as hell. Trichomes up and down. The sexy. That's all I got to say. Sexy. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they taste as good as they look and smell. Well, I mean, come on now. I have not had a bad plant from Bigger L ever. So, <laughs> so everything I've had is tasty. That's what tastes people. Yeah, man. Flavor, flavor, flavor over everything, right? <laughs> as Umami says, our friend Umami says. So, but super stoked about this show. You know why? We're talking about something I we haven't discussed and uh, something I'm very raw about. Don't know much about. Uh, but perpetual gardening. And what is it, you know, and from what I read, because you sent me on little tests and, and I have to learn. So I do a little reading before our shows and what topics you decide to talk about. I have to somewhat be a little bit of knowing, you know, uh, of what we're going to talk about on these shows. And uh, perpetual gardening, from what I read, was continuous gardening. Like you don't stop. You just go and go and go and you do your cleaning while you're gardening. You do your planting while you're gardening. You do your breeding while you just don't. It just you have it running somebody like myself with a small little tent one tent that's it could work it doesn't always work so for me like we talked about on a prior show i take a break in between grows and just because i just need to refresh and reset you know because it takes a lot it takes a lot if you don't do this full time and you're doing this while you have a full time job or 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 and and doing a podcast full time job family all that stuff it get it it, it just it takes some time and it takes work and it takes love, right, to, to grow yeah. your medicine. So for me, I take a month off. But I, I could see how I could possibly do it. Like as soon as that plant is ready to harvest, I already have, I already have uh, my next grow in the, in, in, in the plate in paper towel, ready to pop. Clean the tent, boom, 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 done, ready, it's in, you yeah. know. So you, I could possibly do that. I choose not to. But I understand the meaning of it now, what you mean by that. So what is perpetual gardening? So, yeah, you, you, that's exactly, you know, it just keeps going. And there's a lot of different perpetual gardenings, you know, like it's a big, I mean, any big garden is perpetually gardening, you know, it, it uh, a lot of different reasons. And we'll get into that actually a little bit later. But um, at home, it's a little different. Like you said, in a smaller tent or in a basement sometimes it's only seen that you can plant and flip and plant and flip and you use the one room for everything. But uh, there's some little ways, you, you know, not even little ways, there's just ways that you can perpetual garden in your house and uh, keep it going. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a, maybe you don't have a, a, you know, if you're usually harvesting four plants, maybe you harvest one plant every two weeks. Um, it splits up your trimming. It does a lot of stuff. Um, so that, you know, what is perpetual gardening? You hit it on the, on the head. It's, uh, pretty much anybody, anything that, unless it's seasonal gardening, you know, anything that's in like greenhouses and that has like the, like, especially cannabis that's larger is continuously gardening. Like there's no large facility or even large garden in general that's going to stop gardening and then totally reflip and then stop gardening and then totally reflip. Yeah, because they have plenty of rooms, though, too, that they're growing. And as soon as one room is done, they cut that down. And they also have four or five other rooms growing that might be a few days off. And then as soon as that room is cut down, they probably, what, sh clean it, strip it down, clean it. And then That's all of a sudden, they got that next that next round of clones that, that have already been in, in their cloning room. That's already probably this big, right? And ready to go to the next the next, the next big room, right? Yep, yep. ready and to it, flip. And, you you want to clean. I mean, it depends on room size, you know. Or the the really the it just depends on the how how much how fast you can get it flipped and how the size of it all. But you want to be cleaned in a day. I mean, you want to cut down one day, get rid of all the trash, have nothing there, and then clean the next day, and then really the day after that, you want to be moving in plants. That's the most sufficient. You know, I, you know, I, I guess you could be more sufficient if you had a wild crew that was a little bigger and you came and you did it all in a, in a day. You know, but part of that is splitting up that labor. And doing it that way um, because that's what that does you don't want to have to have 50 people for two days or two weeks and then have no hours for two weeks and have 50 people for two weeks and then no hours for two weeks or whatever it ends up being so um, a lot of times it, do it doesn't make a lot like like we said it doesn't make a lot of sense but uh, there are a lot of times where you could if you use medic medicine constantly 
and you want to have fresh weed constantly and you don't have another source of it, um, it might be an option for you. You know, and it might be your best bet. Oh, I know there's people out there, home home growers that do that perpetual growing where they don't stop. You yeah, know, yeah. they might take a day or two, you know, but they have that next round already, whether they're cloning uh, or they have their seeds germinating already, ready to go into into that. But something like myself, though, also uses the tent for drying. Yeah. So sure, I don't have sure. a dry, I don't have a drying room. So I also have used that tent for drying. So you think 15 days to dry, you know, and then you trim it all up, put in your jars then you could have your next grow going if you want to do it that way too. There's some people that have to use their tent to dry because they have nowhere else to put it. So, um, oh, cool. Cool. yeah. So, you know, but I'm excited about doing a perpetual gardening one day when I have a bigger space to grow, maybe two tents or maybe, you know, you got your, you know, flower, your veg flower tent. And as soon as you're moving, you're just constantly going again with two tents, you know, or one day, hopefully to have my own little greenhouse garden where I could just grow all year round, which would be kind of really fun to do. So, uh, but what makes it different from the traditional cannabis gardening then? Um, so traditionally, like traditional is in the terms of like when we were all, how we've always gardened up until the last, you know, 10, 20 years, not even 20 years now, was it 10, 15 years maybe now? Um, was exactly like what we were talking. You would, you would get around, maybe you'd buy clones, find clones, pop seeds, you do your round, you take it through, you usually veg, flower, and dry in the same area. Maybe somebody would do that three or four rounds. But back in the day, a lot of people would keep it moving. You do three or four rounds, you do maybe a year or two at a place, you break it down and you go to a new place. And then you get a three, six month lull. Um, it was much more lucrative back then. So you could pull down and survive a little while, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but, but, but there's, there's just different. I feel like that that method has gone a lot into the modern day gardening. And so when we were, we were talking about this episode, and it was like we wanted to talk about our, our upcoming shows because we're really excited about it. And it was like, okay, that's probably we can probably talk about that for 15, 20 minutes. And it was like, what's we have you know our lists of our of our what we want to possibly talk about on our shows and ones that don't take a full hour, you know. And uh, I thought this would just be going over kind of like kind of how I do it and how, how I've seen other people do it a little bit and some of the important things and lessons I've learned with it might be able to help some people uh, keep a plant constantly going in their garden. So what's the, what's the method that you do? What's the advice that you would give like for somebody that wants to keep that perpetual garden going all year round? I mean, what's your, which, what's the, it might not be proven, but it works for big girl. So for me, the biggest lesson that I learned was keep a fucking calendar. <laughs> like, keep a calendar. I, I like dry erase boards personally, but I keep it a month ahead of time. Like I know where I'm my month and a month ahead of time. And um, man, does it make things easy because you can, you, it's just a recipe after that, especially if you know your cultivars. So you, you know, this plant's a nine week plant, you know, how your bedroom works, or you know how, you know, maybe you don't have a bedroom and you take clone, you, as soon as you flip your tent to, to flower, you take clones and you try to keep them real small and like one of those tote cloners that we are talking about, or, or maybe you like to auto flowers are a really, really easy way to do a perpetual garden because you can just plant one, you know, feminized auto flowers plant one, wait three weeks, you know, 20 days, 30 days, plant one, wait 30 days, plant one, wait 30 days, harvest one, plant one, wait 30 days, harvest one, plant one, you know, um, super easy that way. Uh, biggest, biggest thing there is drying, which you brought up before. Um, Gotta have that space. Gotta have that space, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the biggest thing there. And I've heard different tricks, but I, I don't really like, like you want some air move. There, there's like, things you want and need there you know and being protected from a larger room dust going everywhere stuff like that's pretty important so yeah because if you're i know people that dry in their closets you know i've seen it i mean i, I mean i know for i know for sure you know yeah. and and some people i've seen where they they like made that closet like so sanitary like they 
put film all around it and it's like all dialed in you know they got fan two flan, fans blowing they make sure they got a small little humidifier and they're trying to keep it around six fifty five sixty percent you know and that's you got to think and some people don't have that some people just have to throw it right in their closet if that's where they do their drying at i get it but you gotta understand something there's can uh it, it could get contaminated don't yeah, forget yeah. there's there's mold and spores and yeast and dust that float through the air Especially you know basement or something or- yeah that's why i keep mine in my tent and as soon as here's the deal about the tent that tent gets sealed to the tilt i mean air, nothing is open the airflow comes from my fan you know i don't because i don't want nothing going in there and contaminating my weed that's my i mean i took you 90 to 120 days to 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 grow to where you had your your booty your booty baby the booty you're gonna smoke now you know that that treasure chest that took you and that you loved and cared for you don't now you're at that point where you don't want to fuck that up you know so remember that how much how much we've talked about so many times the rushed uh or the the lack of effort and drying and curing and it's just so devastating you're to the end man you're to the end you 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 worked you you fucking took care of these babies and you're gonna don't ruin the end that's like that's the key to where it's gonna get you that good smoke (laughs) you know what i mean like it's it's, oh i know oh i know yeah but no behind calendar keeping a calendar we got off but uh, develop a, a pest management. Like, don't react. You need to be in front of it. You need to develop because if you're just going one after the other, after the other, after the other, it, it you that that pest management needs to be on point. Um, when you can stop and flip, you can spray bleach. You can do whatever the fuck you want when your plants aren't in there, and and really clean it and say, okay, I know nothing's living in here, and you can reset it. If it's going perpetual, one plant has a problem your whole room continues to have a problem uh because it never leaves it just pops 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 uh, yeah because you gotta think in a tent in a basement you're gonna get some spiders i I'm, I'm i don't mind a spider though i like a spider i found one in the corner one time after i was done you know when i was before i did the dry i found one in the corner just a little just a little house spider but i was like you know what i'm glad you, you were there yeah. i'm glad i'm not mad about it you're not in my plant you know but if any bugs decide to fucking swing in there that spider's gonna get you. <laughs> oh, dude. So I don't mind a good spider. Scared? I don't mind a good spider. <laughs> outside, especially like tomatoes and, and all like the garden outside. I fucking we we will get these giant wolf spiders, I think they're called sometimes. Oh they man, like those wolf. things eat your cat. <laughs> <laughs> they do, dude. But they're not I mean they're they're just taking care of business and I like them. Yeah, I like spiders, man. They're good. That stuttering prick, that spider stuttering prick you. Good fellas yeah. reference. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so calendar, IPM, get on. And, and it's IPM doesn't have to be some crazy spray this, spray that. Alcohol, soaps, diatomaceous earth, sulfurs, like all this shit. Some of it has sul- sulfur can be used in your plant. You can use that on top of your soil. If you're running organic, you might want to look into that because it can have some organic killing properties, um, mostly like the biology. But um like it can all be done pretty well and uh pretty easily you just have to be on top of it you know um another tip would be clean when it's convenient for you when you cut down a tray or you cut down an area clean like so so say you have you're in a two by four tent you have four plants right well if you cut if you cut down the back right corner take that one in front of it out a little bit or move everything around a little bit clean that area really good because that's going to be easiest for you it's, it beats coming back in and being like, okay, now I got to move all four plants out, or now I don't have this open area that I can, you know, like, so, so just take advantage of your little moments when you can. And like in a room like mine, I have a couple different trays. And so when I cut down a tray, it's more than just cutting down a tray. It's cutting down that tray, cleaning that tray, cleaning the wall closest to that tray, cleaning any fans closest. If it's the tray closest to the dehu, clean the dehu. If it's the tray closest to the AC, clean the AC. It keeps me on my strict calendar. It keeps me on my program. Keeps you on point, baby. Keeps yeah. you on point. And and I try to clean my AC honestly more than that. But um, I know I for sure clean my AC every two months. Like, not take it down and clean it, but spray it all out. Spray it all in. Get my bib on it. Fucking you know, take my filters out. Clean all those and clean the drain pipe. Like little things that collect mold by it because 
even though I'm spraying zero toll um, and things that aren't going to hurt the plants really, I just, I don't want to hit anything in flower. I don't want to hit my flower with zero toll. I don't want to hit my flower with alcohol. I don't, I, I know that it's safe and that it's okay. I just don't like it. I don't want to. Um, so it makes it just easier in a tent, spray down that little back corner. No plants are ready. I'll get a little spray bottle and clean the back corner when that plant gets harvested. I know that it's smaller there and it might be easier just to get the whole back side, but plan that into it, plan that ease into it. Maybe you're, you're taking down two plants. You got four plants, you're taking down two plants at a time. Every time you harvest those two plants, fucking clean that shit. Uh, the cleaner, the better. Um, have your areas planned out. If you're in a perpetual garden, you, it, 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 unless you have auto flowers, you need two areas. Uh, a flowering area and then the other. The other can be clones and veg. Um, but it needs to be, you know, it could, the other could be a tote. Literally, we're, we're talking one uh, about this uh, little clone tote. And it's just, what do they call it? 27 liter totes, those, those black and yellow totes at Lowe's. Yeah, I think I was yeah. there. I don't know. I'm fucking baked now, so I can't fucking. You're talking numbers now? Something like that. I don't know. One of them, the, the sometimes when I sell it for like five bucks, those totes, you know, like uh, whatever it is. But I saw one of these LEDs are so dope now and so, so not hot. They had a couple little veg LEDs in there on the lid, and then they put a computer fan in the side of that bitch. And they put like a little filter on the other side, almost like you're growing money. MacGyver in that shit right there. Two holes with like, um, like the cotton, not cotton, but like the the medical covers on it or whatever, uh, like mushrooms, you know, like keeping it sterile. And it's just like, man, like you could probably get away with that if you had plants and before you took it and you, and you put it into the tent, right? And you veg it in the tent for one or two weeks from that from that tote. And then right before you flip to flower, maybe the first week in flower even, because some people debate that. First week in flower, uh, you have less nitrogen typically, which is easier to clone, some people say, hmm. um, because your plant won't focus on growing as much. Um, so some people take fucking clones first week of flower. So let's say you take clones first week of flower. Okay, you throw them in your tote. You keep them fucking small get through flower, keep them small in there, low feeding, low light, cut them back early, cut them back fast, make sure your nodes don't get too spread out so you can keep that shit stout. Maybe feed it some monosilicic acid at a heavy dose rate to keep it stout. Um, there's some different tips and tricks, but um, when you're, you're about to flower, you know, cut that down, find yourself a little closet that you think is sterile, move those plants into there, and then you move your tote into your tent. You let it grow and veg in your tent for maybe two weeks. One week in flower, take the clone. Eight weeks later, you're ready to chop. Your clones are, yeah, that, that it's going to be, you're going to have to have a technique to keep your fucking clones that t short in that tote. But it could definitely be done. Like, they can survive for sure. Keep it rotating, you know. But uh, it, 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 you need those two areas. Unless you have auto flowers, it's very hard, like, I would be interested in perpetual gardening without that. Like you'd be talking some MacGyver, like a leaf <laughs> edge or something. Like I can't, I wouldn't, I, you know, I'm not smart enough to think about that. But, um, and lastly, just, just stay on your schedule. Sometimes, yeah, you, you fall behind, do this and that, but like the garden stops for fucking nobody. I need to make that into a shirt. Garden stops for nobody. The grow hour. The garden yeah. stops for nobody. The garden Shh. fucking stops for nobody. Nobody better part. fucking steal that for our T-shirt. That might be our first T-shirt. The front, the logo, the gut. Yeah. We do got stickers now. We do got grow hour stickers. I just haven't fucking shown anybody yet. I got to. Uh, I was waiting for you to see. You. I was waiting. I was waiting for you to come inside. Come back into town. I was going to give you some, and then we were going to fucking showcase them. But that's, that's a great. The grow hour in the front, and then what we put on the back. What did you just say? Your garden stops for nobody. That, I love it. I what love it. That's a great wow. fucking line right there. Your gardens. I got to write that down before I forget. <laughs> got to write that down. I had this um, is the second thing I wrote down today for the show. So <laughs> I got to write that down. Yeah. Shit don't stop. So, and that's, I mean, you don't trim up today. That shit's going to be worse tomorrow. You don't trim up tomorrow, next week. That's just going to be way worse. It's going to take you twice as long and your bud's going to suffer from it. Uh, all kinds of shit, you know? And so, you, wrote it down you're tired you got that extra 15 minutes today just get it done um perpetual the garden starts for nobody 
sauce for nobody, baby. And that's going to be like, I'm going to put in big parentheses because Big Girl said so. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the nation mark. Uh, <laughs> dude i i wrote that down everybody i fucking because i'll forget because i'm baked so i'll forget it go back, go back through and listen to the show oh, yeah. that's my second idea though that's the second good idea i wrote down two today before the show we were talking about the other idea i wrote down can't tell anybody that one yet though because it might not happen that's just a th- an idea hopefully it'll happen but idea. so what's the super duper ooby dooby newbie tip all right we mentioned a couple times but Use 10 times cow mac. No, I'm just fucking. No, it's not the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Auto flowers. There it I is. Get it, guys. <laughs> People have their doubts. Fuck, guys. I love them both. Don't you? And I'm, I'm honestly, I, I like my photos better for certain reasons. But if you have a two by four tent, auto flowers are so fucking easy to manage that way. I have, I, you know what? I, all right. So I did reg femme, and that was fucking super easy. When auto flat, when you start doing auto flower femme Earl, that's okay. when I think I, that's when I think I'm going to move like right into that. And just, that's when you, I think you'll see my perpetual gardening come. That's when I think well, I'll start sure. doing it. Cause then yeah. when I don't have to think about it uh, and just like, it's just going to turn and burn and get different flavors yeah. from you. Oh, it's yeah. fucking, it's on like donkey Kong. Alabrihe too. And Humminbird Hills. Those probably the three of you will probably be in the repertoire. Once you, once you have that all dialed in. Dude, did you, I just, I, I, I love photos and I, you know, lighting another light doesn't dim, you know, one candle doesn't dim the other candle, whatever. I'm all high. I can't light one joint doesn't make the other joint less dank. I like um, that one better. That's another yeah. nice t shirt, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full of them. This blueberry fucking soda has got us full of ideas. It's good stuff. I um, love it. But yeah, auto flowers, man, that shit's easy. Oh, this is going to be done in 90 days. Like, you, you literally can plant that shit every 30 days, 20 days, whatever it ends up being. And and maybe it's a little longer, ninety days. Who gives a fuck? Because that's such an easy schedule. Speaking Uh, of speaking of blueberry soda, that's another strain I was a pig on. Just so you know. (laughs) Between the GG forwards, I took the most of. And if any of my family and friends who who partake with me, and and the blueberry soda was another one I I took. The only one I gave that to uh, my my niece. She needed some weed, and I uh, I gave her a nice jar of that because I knew how good it was. Yeah, (laughs) I'm a pig. And the, the plant, too, was such a beastly plant. Like, when I tested that plant out, I was using a 4 by 4 area for maybe, like, 12 plants or something. Uh, I can't remember 100%. But I remember this plant took up about a third of the entire area. Like, and I had to, I couldn't do fucking dick to stop it. Like, it was just going to grow. So um, I crossed that peach tank to it. Nice. So nice. We'll see how they turn out. So basically, you're talking about what your schedule, kind of your schedule is, you know, you, you know, what you do, you know. Cool. So for me, I have a bedroom and a flower room, and I dry in my flower room. Perpetual garden is very nice for that, too, because in a dry, if you, you have a separate dry area, that dry area could be four times smaller. You're not drying the entire growing area at the same time. You're drying for two weeks at a time. So if you're harvesting every two weeks, it just, it falls with your fucking. And you do the whole plant, right? Yeah. From what I, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. You take the whole fucking plant and dry it upside down. It's fucking yep. dope. When I saw that, I don't, I, I have not tried that yet. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a possibility. Cause I got enough room in the tent to do that. Oh, it's so nice. What I, I go to my plant. If there are some leaves, I'll trim those up. Usually they're done. Usually about week seven, eight, I like to trim up and. Eh. I, I heard, I've never seen this in a study, anything, but I'm a fucking dweeb when it comes to old school gossip. But that when you cut an area, more silica comes to that area. So I never like to trim my leaves up too late. And I know a lot of people do it. And I've had weed that have been has been trimmed up really late, but I just never fucking try. I, I don't know why. I'm just stupid like that. So I try to do my last trim up week seven, eight and give the time, the plant time to recover. And they're pretty bare down to the flowers then, like a few leaves. But uh, come to the plant, I write the initials and the number, if it's a uh, pheno hunt, on the stock. Then I cut the whole plant down and hang it. Don't have to transfer any of the tag, like any of the tags in there, or, or, or remember what it was, or just write it right on the stock with a permanent marker. That's pretty nice. It works very, very well. And... Uh, my little tray areas, you know, just it makes cutting down really easy. Um, 
and it dries really nicely honestly the branches kind of keep it separated a little bit from itself and how my the dry tents i have are set up they pull air out of the top and they have the filter down at the bottom so air comes in the bottom naturally goes over all the flowers and goes up to the top hmm. um, I, I put a couple six inch fans in there also to kind of push air back down just to try to like you know get it mixed up a little bit but um it works really well so Typically, you got two weeks to clone, yeah? So you you put that into your schedule. Your veg is usually three to four weeks. If you have to last the whole, like if you're taking a clone week one of flower on a nine-week strain, and you're doing that whole fucking tote tech we were talking about, this is obviously going to be different, but this is this is just for me. So I, I'm i usually two weeks to clone. Um, I'm pretty happy if I can see roots like on everything after 14 days ready to go you know if it's not ready to go by then i'm usually not bringing the clone out um unless it's it's in like an entire strain then you know i'll, I'll, I'll wait for it obviously but it comes out in the veg for three to four weeks you know sometimes the schedule flip it early sometimes flip it a little late you just do what you can do uh in my case you know in larger gardens and, and different things that are on like that super strict time schedule you're on fucking time but in my case the three to four weeks, like 10 week strain to nine week strain, stuff like that. You just, you know, do what you can do there. Um, and then nine to 10 weeks in flower is how I like it. I don't like people talk when people give me eight week strains. The only time I run a strain for eight weeks is if it hurt herms on me at week, like nine or 10, you know, like I don't like, I, I like, I'd rather finish and be more bronze and have a more developed plant than go for the highest THC on that harvest. So, um for me i take my clones week three or th three to five then it just depends on how you know that's breaking down for me so between week if i if i'm flipping in so i got a tray it's at week three to five i plan to take clones for that tray at week three to five and flower so it goes i know that is exactly for that tray i know exactly when that tray comes down it's getting fucking stocked back it goes Hi, baby. She decided to come in and join us. Yeah. Want to have a chat, <laughs> Yuki girl? I love you. Mwah. But, <laughs> Go but yeah, go. that's that's um, it, it rotates right through like that, and that's really the whole schedule and calendar. When I start keeping a calendar and start keeping my schedule like that, instead of being like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get some clones going for this." Oh yeah, I'm gonna. I hope you know, like it would just everything falls in, and you just keep pace. I love it. I love it. What um. Somebody like myself, though, how would you be able to manage something like that on a schedule? Like, would a small grow like myself? Like, I don't have a whole basement grow. Like, how could I? How can I manage something like that? Just what? So, what I would do, I would do, I would get that uh, tote, and I would try to take fucking clones. If you like that plant, now you can also do seeds. You could pop seeds in that tote. Seeds naturally take longer to fucking pop, and you could run through some photo period seeds. Then, you know, if you find something you really, really like, you can take that clone and re-veg. You know, I've, I've taken tons of clones pretty late in the flower. They're pretty easy to fucking clone. Um, hmm. Now, after you see roots, they get, they like stall out, most of them. And then they get real funky growth, but it all, it normalizes. And it, it takes a month or so, but that might be inducive for what you're doing anyway. <laughs> There you go. So, there you go. Want to, but yeah, that's you know the it's really hard, man. It's really hard with one two by four area to to run that um, without using the seeds. So, hmm. but I mean, I, I I like your fucking schedule though. It's pretty. It works for you, but I think it could work for a lot of people, you know, because it's so the way you dialed it in, you know. But it's also like you said, keeping a calendar, keeping a good written journal. You know, making sure you're paying attention to your timelines throughout the whole way, you know, so it's not that perpetual guarding is not hard. It's just being consistent, right? Yeah, it's just, you, you have to really, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's keeping your plan. When you're going through one garden and you're done, it can be, you can, you can be done. Say, oh, I think it's time. I'll clean that whenever I want to clean it. Or even if you're hustling it, like, and you're cleaning it tomorrow and reflipping it, it's like a complete reset, you know? And, right. and really back in the day, and, and and this isn't speaking from my own personal experience, I was lucky enough to work with people that were growing in the nineties and they would talk about it. They, you, they, a lot of these gardeners back in the day would do one or two harvests a year, maybe three. 
And at which, I mean, three, they get clones, three would probably be their full year, but one or two harvests a year. And it was so lucrative that you could take a little vacation afterwards. You know, they go, go follow fish. Yeah. Fish. When you were getting, when you were getting 5,000 a pound, it was yeah. great. I remember those days. <laughs> that was the nineties. The nineties when you first when I I don't want to tell my whole story, but back in the nineties when you uh, and Earl, you and I have talked a little bit about my my history, and I I just not there to share it yet. And uh, but when I was selling five thousand dollar, four to five thousand dollar pounds of straight dro, back then, oh, but it did cost you a lot more money to do yeah. it all too. Don't forget. Yeah, um, and yields were you know, way lower. The, yeah. they wasn't, you know, people weren't hitting three pounds of light. No. I mean, one room sometimes would get you a pound and a half if you were two pounds, if you were lucky, if you depending on how many rooms you had. But I don't, that's for another story. But yeah. yeah, yes, sometimes you'd maybe in a small little one room full tray grow, like you might get a couple pounds. So if that's your five, 10 grand, but it might have cost you probably three grand to set it all up and all of it the way it costs to the end. So you could probably pop about seven grand, you know, but that's good money, man. <laughs> grand in the 90s. I didn't even have a grand in the nineties. That was a fucking <laughs> But like I said, if, if, if you're making four, 4,005 pounds, some people were selling their shit for, dude, that's a lot of money. But a lot Even of money. In college, you, if you wanted heady weed, you're paying $60 a fucking eight. If you wanted pretty yeah. good weed, it was fifty dollars an eighth, and the normal shit was thirty. And then, and it wasn't even called anything around me at least thirties, fifties, and sixties. Right. And answered yeah. all your questions. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty well. That is like I've always said, you got okay, good, and great. You know, yeah. so an okay meant you it's cheap. You know, but you can afford it. You know, good was good, and great was oh, I'm paying a lot. <laughs> but you know when you had that kind of money and you, you can get really good you're gonna buy the really good um yeah why why is it preferred by so many people this perpetual gardening i mean you've hit on a lot of points why it's preferred for you but why yeah. why do most people it's preferred f to them so when you get into like large gardening the biggest thing is that it spreads out the work and you can fit way more into a smaller space if i mean if if you're doing a whole giant room and then you have to have a dry area for that whole giant room and then you have to have a veg area for that whole giant room you know it, then it, it's all it's a, you have to have a much larger space than if you're splitting that giant room into a quarter now your dry room only has to be a quarter size of that and your bedroom still needs to be a decent size but you can be rotating through that shit to where you don't have to have a bedroom big enough to hold all of your week four or five veg plants. It only has to be big enough to hold a quarter of your week four and five, a quarter of your week three to four, a quarter of your week two to three, and a quarter of your week one to twos with some clones. You know, so um, that's the biggest thing, really. It, it, and it, it, it spreads out the workload because now instead of having – one pound to trim at a time there's a quarter of a pound to trim at a time and you just work through it that way and then when you're done with that quarter pound another quarter pound comes and another quarter pound comes so instead of being two people to get a pound done in four hours one person can get that pound done in two hours over two weeks you just that's pretty good water. that's a pretty good yield no, the way I look at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and like it's, it's nice. It's like if 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 I had to harvest my entire garden at a time, first off, my patients wouldn't be getting fresh cannabis all the time. They would be getting fresh cannabis half the time, and then the other half the time, yeah, it would only be you know a month to six weeks old, but it still be older than you know my. They're getting. I usually have my weed down two weeks. I'm throwing it into. I'm starting to burp it usually, but not. But recently, I've been throwing it into the groves. Yeah, you don't have to burp no more. <laughs> as soon as it's in those groves, I let them smell it. That's really what it is. You can smell whatever you want. I'll just tell you, yeah, I harvested that three weeks ago. Yeah, I harvested that six months ago. And, you know, sometimes when it gets a little older, I take it out of the equation and put it aside for extraction or something. But I, I you know, I mean, but I've smoked ugh, some of my, like, I, I had the Majin Fujita, man. I had like two big monster nugs still left of it, you know? Kept yeah. it pretty 
dude, I fucking rolled 10 joints of that and took it. We went to a little thing uh, on Sunday. And, dude, I, I fucking lit it up with a couple people, and they're like, this is fucking good. I'm fucking stoned. I'm like, nice. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but I, I, like I said, I kept that. It, it's kept in a really good, you know, really good place to keep that humidity and the and the cold of the room, yeah. uh, like, perfection, yeah. I think. Yeah, you know, almost like, almost, yeah. it's almost like a wine cellar, I mm-hmm. could call it, you know, where you want it to be at that that, that temperature, you know. So, um, but it smoke, it still smokes fucking great, and it's still sticky as fuck. Right, yeah, fuck yeah. And yeah, that's, that over, nice that's over. That's over. That's over a year old. Fuck yeah. So I, I mean, I don't know. And I still have, like I said, four monster nugs of the uh, uh, the Louis Trey, the Wee Man Four Twenty Experimental Strain. That wow. I think I'm gonna put. I told you I'm gonna put it in the Grove bags, and uh, and see what happens. Leave it in there for a couple of weeks and see what happens with a Boveda, and That'd then smoke cool. it. I, I can still smoke it. It's probably got tons of cbn in it and it's, it's still not it's not that dry i took a mug out and i like felt it it's not wet but it's not like like brittle yeah it's still got sponge to it that's pretty good i i, I and i don't understand much you know why it, why it kept that way i just know i kept it in a i keep it in a really good area that's why you're in a good area. You're in a dry area. It's gonna dry out. You're in a wet area. It's probably gonna fucking mold. You got it stored right. perfectly, properly. You know that's how you get it to last. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you when you come when you come by uh, uh, in a couple weeks. I'll show you the Majin Fujita and I'll show you the uh, the Weed Man. We um, should reach out to Ghost Genetics. We talk about we've talked about Majin so much. Didn't, didn't I, I, I fucking love that strain? We should reach out to him. We should have him on the. We should have him on the show. He deserved my. I, I mean. But the two, still the two best, the two best I think strains that I grew look wise, high wise too. But look wise was the Louis and fucking the Majin Fujita. Uh, uh, um, fucking uh, Yeet was beautiful looking too. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Yeet was really fucking good, dude. Yeah, yeah. That Yeet fucking I, we gotta smoke some of that when oh. you come by too, because it's been it yeah. smelled fucking fantastic now. But yeah, those two strains though were some of the best looking, crystally, big fat chunkers, you know, of of strains that I grew. And and that Majin Fujita man, people gave me mad props on that one too. Like they like this is like really good. I'm like thanks, you know. I just it's genetics, you know. It's not mine. It just came out nice, you know. I just grew it right, and yeah. that fucking grow was tough. Remember, that fucking shit grew all over the fucking tent, man. I could there was no control yeah, in that yeah, fucking. Yeah. There was no control in that fucking plant. I remember I was, I was, I'm like, dude, there's just no control. I can't stop. And I had three in that tent, so I mean, but uh, it was a, uh, it was a fun grow. It was, I mean, like I said, I got a lot of yield. I got nine ounces out of that fucking thing. Fuck smokable yeah. weed, smokable weed. The rest of it got pushed to fucking eddies and, uh, and and butters and shit, and you know teas so but yeah it's a fun fucking thing speaking of breeding and speaking of breeders uh dude we got some exciting stuff coming for everybody in the next three shows right yes so we got we got i'm gonna let earl talk about the 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 who what we're gonna be talking about with each breeder but we got the breeding segment coming the next three episodes and i'm super stoked because we got scapegoat and earl's gonna give you a history of them seattle chronic and ufo and no. there I've been on their sites and I've seen their stuff and man, I, I'm super stoked. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about scapegoat first. Yeah. He, he'll do the first show. So he'll be our next show. Um, we're doing a three segment part and I don't, have we talked about this a little bit before? I can't, remember. we did on a one year. We talked a little bit about it, but not in huge depth, but yeah. Well, okay. I see. Yeah. I remember now. Um, yeah. So with scapegoat, we're going to go over uh, before you make seeds. Um, and this is going to be part of a three show segment of before you make seeds, making seeds. And now your seeds are made. What do you do? You know, um, there's a lot of people out there doing it. Um, and even a lot of people like me, dude, like these guys are, are have been doing it. Um, I've personally been following a lot of their stuff. I've po- popped most all their genetics um not like every strain they made but like a lot of different like dude it's gonna be fun um scapegoats from here in michigan which is cool um he makes like 
topicals and stuff. And uh, if you're in the weed game a little bit, uh, you know uh, Scapegoat Genetics. He's a wee-woo on... Wee-woo, wee-woo, wee-woo. Wee-woo, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not going to... Uh, I think it's W E E W W U U or something like that. Fuck, I should have looked that up before the show. But uh, he'll tell us when he comes on. Yeah, he, yeah, he he's a uh, a really cool uh, breeder. Um, Black cherry cheesecake cookies B C C C uh, is probably I, it's like a pack I've had for a while that's been like sitting there like just waiting to be popped, bro. I'm so geeked for this. <laughs> Um, and then making the seeds, Seattle Chronic, um, dude. I we use almost solely Seattle Chronic's uh, hemp seeds out at our uh, when we did all the CBD stuff. And man, everything from him, he is a fucking OG. Um, they call him the captain. Um, and I can't uh, wait to ask him. I can't wait to ask him why. I'm so excited to talk with him. We've we've talked through email a little bit and on Instagram a little bit. Um, same with all these guys. We've talked to a, a little bit about this and that, and uh, I've got a lot of all their seeds. Um, but uh, and then now the seeds are made, right? So what do you do now? Because I know there's a lot of people out here that have been making seeds, and maybe they did the before the seeds. Maybe they made the seeds, and now how? What the fuck? How how do you get rid of these seeds? And so UFO Genetics, uh, he does some really cool stuff. He does like auctions every Saturday. He has a website. Um, he's super active in the community, and, and he just uh, he's going to be a really cool guy to talk to um, about some of these different options and some of his thoughts uh, on uh, what to do now that your seeds are made. So uh, it's going to be a fucking cool ass episode for anybody interested in seeds, especially, but I think for everybody. So uh, UFO also that blueberry soda, that is UFO. He has a lot of really nice blueberry work. And that's what we're smoking on right now. I'm pretty stoned. Thanks, UFO. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the breeding segment. I'm looking forward to learning more about breeding for one day. Like if I ever have a big enough area to do breeding, we did our first little breeding project project outside. It was kind of fun, but I'm super stoked to uh have these three breeders on and and learn from three you know i guess yeah. what would you call them like fucking some of the ogs in the industry some people that they're well known you know yeah i would say uh, ogs by today's fucking standards for sure um and ogs probably by any standards um and just just i think supporters of the plant supporters of the movement um they're you know i'm not you know it's they're just people to fucking to know and to, to they they're gonna know what they're talking about, and they're gonna have a unique, fucking accurate perspective. Of, of yeah, and then we'll have them on for their burping in the bag episodes too, which is gonna be dope. And then we're gonna have them on for the roundtable discussion. It might be a three, so. might be a three for if we can't get somebody else to do a show on breeding. It might be a three for. We might have all three of them on. That'd be our first three for instead of a twosome. Yeah, you know, I hope they, do. <laughs> I hope they want to do that with us. And uh, I'm, I mean, dude, it's gonna be dope. I'm yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a good show. But I have to say, uh, we have a, a channel on on Instagram called the v -V 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 Vipers channel, and uh, there's like I don't know, like thirty people on there: breeders, growers, meme peeps, just just people that have been part of the show for a long time. And when I lost my account, they followed me right away. Some people we've had on the show too. And uh, it's it's a fun channel. If you ever want to join, just just DM me and I'll get you on the v -V -V Vipers channel. Uh, but um, I want to thank Satisfied Mind for throwing some good questions out today on on there. Because I mean, like I said, it's young young growers, young breeders like myself that are just starting out, or people that are just newbies. And there's some people ask questions. We have we have Big Girl on there, of course. We have uh, Mike from Straight Age Genetics, Ali Brihe. We have uh, uh, Hummingbird Hills on there. I don't know who else we have on there, but um, but it's th this a fun chat. yeah, it's a really fun chat. The memes on there are great. The gifts on there are fucking hilarious. You know, people just throwing one liners out is great. And you know, sometimes it comes in waves. Sometimes you don't hear from people for about a week, and all of a sudden, like for like ten straight days, just people are just fucking. You know, our friends from fucking Australia, Tez and Reefer Terps are there. You know, on on this page, so we got people from all around the world. 
on on this channel from one end to the corners to the other. So which is kind of dope. But he asked a, a, a he's a good grower. And I've seen his, a lot of his grow, his home grow and stuff. It looks fantastic. And, and yeah. he plays himself like he doesn't know his shit. But I want to say I uh, thanks for the question. And the question that he asked, and thanks, big girl, for uh, for answering it. Because I just do, I just told him what I do. I don't know if it's the 100% correct way to do it, but it's what I've learned and what I've read and what I've learned from the show. But um, he had asked, uh, hold on a second, I'm trying to find it. Um, he was bringing down his harvest and he was asking about whenever I, uh, um, uh, it's about turning the lights off 40, 24 or 48 hours before you harvest. And is it, is it really true a thing? And, uh, so I just gave him what I, what I did, you know, but he, you gave a good answer. So, cause he asked what our thoughts and he goes, generally he's asking not to criticize, but he asked maybe, uh, is anybody out there do it different? And you gave a great response. And, um, and he also asked about the cold water flush or whatever makes sense to him. Uh, but he gave a great definition of it all. But then you said, can I read or do you want to, you want to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can read or I can talk about it. It doesn't matter. I, I, um, so it was going crazy today and I tried to read what I could, uh, dude, I've been so fucking busy lately. <laughs> but it's, so I, I read what I could. So I hope I didn't, uh, I wasn't trying to correct anything or anything. No, like, no, because I, I had asked, I had asked any any of our breeder friends, grower friends, yeah. uh, you know, uh, can can answer some of this, and that's yeah. why I have you all on there, not because because I love you and I love talking yeah. to all of you guys on there and gals on there, but but also because there's young growers on there and people that are just home growers and people that want to learn more. That's why you you all are on there too to give your advice the best you can because they might have supported you in your seed business too. So, sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh yeah, satisfied mind. We we talk pretty frequently on there, or at least give ourselves, you know, thumbs up and and likes and stuff, you know. Um, I it was so through the te- the chats. It was talking about the end of the light cycle, twenty four hours. Uh, so th- what this is is at the end of your flowering period, you turn the lights off for twenty four or forty eight hours, and it's theorized that 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 will increase the um, trichome production. Um, I think probably through a stressor. Um, but that's something I've never tried. I, I've heard people doing it for sure. Um, and they do it probably for a reason, right? And so I could see it doing something like maybe pulling sugars, maybe doing something chemically there. Um, I don't know why it would build trikes, but I wouldn't be able to say, hey, this doesn't build trikes. Like if somebody, if it came out in science, I'd be like, oh yeah. I just don't, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I can say that at the beginning of the flowering period, I like 24 hours of darkness and I can't really do it cause I'm in a petrol perpetual garden. Um, but I will turn my lights not off, but like way down the first 24 hours. Some of them I turn off depending on the light it is, but most of them like have a nozzle on it. So I just turn it down to its lowest. Um, and I'll turn it on for only 10 hours. So I just try to like really let it know for like that first few days, maybe, um, but if I could, I would do the, the 24 hours of darkness. And that really is just let your plant know, hey, it's fucking time to flower. Um, so will 10-hour days. If you start your first week and do 10-hour days. And if you have a super high light, uh, like par on your light, um, absorbable light at your leaf, uh, you might even be able to lessen that uh, depending on what your DLI, your daily light intake would be. And... Uh, I don't know a ton about that, but I do know that there's been some stuff that's come out. Uh, we talked about uh, Bruce uh, Bugby. Man, I always want to say Big B because of the coffee place up here. But I'm <laughs> and, uh, dude, he's so uh, revolutionary in the stuff he does uh, as far as, like, the research and, and just how on point he is. And, like, he's, like, a, a professor at a, a university. Um, I don't want to say the wrong one. But, uh is he in some stuff he did is he found it was about daily light intake and yeah you can have more too much par and you can burn and stuff but plants will only absorb so much light in any given day and so if you have a high par that's that light is going to be reached quicker you know so if you have a real powerful light or these real powerful leds real close you might be able to run a eight or nine or ten hour day and get really similar results um and then your power bill is that going down fun. a little bit <laughs> yeah you know, he, so. he he also talked about the flush too and you gave a great answer on that also sure yeah so the flush 
uh, a lot people go in days and that's fine that's totally fine to say oh i flush for seven days this day and that day that's how i say it too but when you're trying to figure out what how you want to flush with the system that you run typically it's about following the salt buildup in your pot so you have your pot and you've been feeding it and you feed it to runoff maybe you don't whatever your method is um, which I'd always suggest to get a little bit of runoff in anything. It just uh, ensures that you're at least saturating the full pot. Uh, if you water slowly, don't water too too fast. But sorry, sorry. Um, so you, uh, when you're reading the, to read this, the easiest way um, is to read the runoff. There are tools out there that can read the soil, but typically soil's pH changes. It, it can change pretty quickly. And so unless you want to take like multiple readings of your pot and then like find the fucking average, if you do the, the soil, you can read the runoff. Uh, or if you, if you water the soil, you can read the runoff in the water. And so if you get a normal EC water meter that you can also then read your food, which is super, super important in my opinion. Um, First meter you want is a pH. Second meter you want is a fucking EC ppm. You know the only reason EC ppm isn't number one is because most uh, nutrient lines give you the recommended dose. So uh, pH usually is number one because everybody's water is a little different. But read the EC and the p uh, or the parts per million coming out. And then when that gets down to, I like to get mine to under 0.5, but my water that I feed goes in at 0.2. So a 0.3 difference. And um, that's when I say, okay, I know it's time to cut. And I know for me, like how I water, that takes me a week. So I adjusted it that way. So over that week, it's slowly getting weaker. You know, at the beginning of that week, I start usually my first feeding that week. Because I start my flush really two weeks early. I take a lot of my food out two weeks early and I really want to start that flush down hmm. and really start to relax the plant and really start to let it know like, Hey, you're going to run out of food. Um, and just, you know, start that early. So by the time I get to my last week, my EC build up in my pot probably goes from like going in at a 1.7, 1.8 coming out at a 2.0, uh, down to like a 1.5, which is what's preferred by the way, guys, I run my shit super hot. Um, I run one gallon pots under super high lights with pump CO2 in there. And it's just the way that works for me. 1.5 EC has been found by fucking Bruce again to be the most optimal EC for your plants. This isn't my shit or any of the stuff that's, I was running hotter before I saw that shit, you know? And since I cut back a little bit, not only was my food better, but uh, not only is my food cheaper, uh, but my plants are healthier and things are, you know, nicer. So, but yeah, read the runoff. Um, and when that comes down, that's when you know that you flush properly. But um, without that, just flush the shit out of it. Look at the plant. When you start to see those yellows and you start to see that ripeness, you can probably cut down maybe wait a day or two where you think that there's almost nothing in the pot, salt-wise. Nice. Thank you for the tip and the trick, and thanks, Satisfied, satisfied Minds, for the questions on our Vipers channel. But also, I wanted to show mad respect because you've been following us and talking to us for a very long time. We consider you a friend of the yeah. show. And uh, one day we'll hook up. We'll trade some weed together. We've talked about it now for a hot minute. So, uh, But uh, uh, thanks. And anybody that ever has a question, just reach out to uh, Bigger Earl or myself, and we'll definitely talk about it on the show. We appreciate that. You don't, you don't even know how much we appreciate that. It's uh it's a uh, to me it, it humbles me a lot that you respect our show enough to ask us a question so don't don't it's just so fun to talk about it man it's yeah. so fun to hear how people do it like i just want to even on a tangent right there having fun talking <laughs> about stuff you didn't even ask you know because like, well, because that blueberry soda man <laughs> exactly <laughs> blueberry soda just everything. makes you have some good conversation you know so <laughs> Uh, but looking forward to the next three shows, everyone. Stay tuned with this. Uh, I think you're gonna, I think you're really gonna like what we talked about. So, um, really super stoked about this all what we got coming up, and looking forward to all the way to the end of the year. So, stick with us, man. Hopefully, everyone out there 
is enjoying it and keep us sending us questions keep us showing us love we appreciate all the listens all the likes and all the dms you never you don't even know how much i appreciate it. i know big girl does too big girl one last thing yeah. you uh you got some uh uh genetics out there you uh bagged back up right you packaged up and ready to go right what do you got going yeah. on uh i finished the end of the uh, my first auto flower line the so I, I pack 50 packs of each line at a time and then i do 100 tops um Sometimes it doesn't get to that. I with auto flowers, I breed the one plant with photo periods. I breed the one plant in a two by four tent. They don't get very big, um, so I go. I top out at a hundred. So I just uh, put together my last thirty packs of of a couple and fifty packs of a, a couple of the my auto flowers, the Poos Peaches line, and then I just bagged up my like. 20 to 50 of the uh like from number fucking 10 or 20 up to 50 of the uh the photo period line that stinky haze line man dude i fucking love that line i'm so excited to get some more of those winners uh my chem cheese haze and the peach tank one specifically because my strawberry um i found one that i really liked but then there was one behind it that i thought i was gonna like more but it was like two weeks behind it and so i let it go uh and stupid and like i didn't, I didn't get it i just i just was stupid about it i didn't keep a fucking the strawberry that i wanted basically and so i was like i'm gonna find that again and then i fucking didn't find it again so now i have to hunt it again <laughs> that's why that's why you're a pheno hunter man <laughs> yeah, yeah, i was like man surely i'll find this again and i did like a fucking 10 hey. feet or Eight seed the first time, and the second one was more, and I didn't find it. Don't call me Shirley. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it it, it didn't work. That's the tragedies of cannabis. That's it. That's it. So, what's the other tragedies of cannabis too? We always fuck up about. We don't ever, ever. I try to sometimes, but I don't ever use enough cow mag. (laughs) I dude, the amount of cow mag that I try to use that just, I don't know what happens. Everybody, we love you. Don't forget the cow mag. Peace. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at eightdecades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.